Not too long ago, I got Black Ops 3's Platinum as well as the 100%. And in the comments of that video, some of you wanted me to do Black Ops 4's Platinum. Since I started trophy hunting, I was always scared of this Platinum because of one thing. And that was Blackout, Call of Duty's first Battle Royale mode made by Treyarch and released in 2018 when Black Ops 4 came out. Today, I'm going to be facing my fears and going for Black Ops 4's Platinum alongside the 100% and getting every single trophy in all five DLC packs for this game. In Black Ops 4, there are four different modes to tackle. Those being Zombies, Multiplayer, Blackout, and Specialist HQ, which we'll get to later. Starting off with Zombies, one of the grindiest trophies in the game, and a big reason why this Platinum takes so long is this trophy right here, Prestigious Award. For this trophy, I have to level up 25 different weapons in Zombies to the max level. Some weapons in this game, you are required to level them up 16 to 17 times in order to get them to the max rank. I did get a little lucky while doing this, as Black Ops 4 often has double XP and double weapon XP on and off, but this was still a really really long grind hours and hours of just loading up a game of classified just killing zombies with a gun till round 30 then restarting the game and doing that again this grind got even more annoying when eventually i was finished with every wall weapon in the game and could just level up the box weapons finally after almost three weeks later i was able to finish this trophy another kind of grindy trophy on this game was the multiplayer portion my two big tasks were to get level 55 and win 50 games of multiplayer again level 55 wasn't that bad as there was double xp and i just grinded the hell out of that when it was going on winning 50 games was a bit of a grind though you never know when you're going to get into a game versus cdl pros and then have a bunch of 45 year old dads who just got done with their nine to five have no headset and are playing on a 70 inch flat screen as your teammates or if the roles are flipped and you absolutely destroy the other team but i tried my best here i was playing the absolute crap out of the objective every game and there was nuketown 24 7 on here so i could just grind that and get through games super fast eventually after about 10 hours of total play time i was able to get this done win number 50 let's go now going back to zombies where there are plethora of trophies in this game 37 out of the 53 trophies in this game have to do with zombies not even including all the trophies in the dlc of this game with five dlc packs that all have 10 trophies that adds an additional 50 trophies all having to do with zombies 87 out of the 103 trophies in this game are zombie related the first map i decided to get every trophy for was nine Nine, in my opinion, is the best zombies map on Black Ops 4. I love the concept of fighting inside of a gladiator arena, and I love the Easter egg for this map just as much. For this Easter egg, you need to complete a challenge for each god statue that is on the map, Denu, Ra, Zeus, and Odin. Once all four of their challenges are completed, you can now enter the boss fight. All right, we about to head into the final boss fight here. Let's do this thing, baby. Got my healing on Savo. Why did my camo change, though? This is one of the better boss fights, in my opinion, in Call of Duty Zombies. You fight a big, giant elephant. Let's do this, baby. All right, you know what? No, I'm, I'm not playing around with y'all. Look at, look at y'all. Look at y'all. Boom. Y'all dead. Wait, hold up. You're not dead. Now you are. Now you're dead. Now you're done for. The healing on Salvo is just too OP. Bro, pulled up on... What? How am I missing that? Buddy just pulled up on me and just Mike Tyson knocked my shit out. Oh, there he is. Right in front of the max ammo too, bro. God damn it. All right, Elvin, just don't mind me. Just let me let me get that real quick. Helio, it did it. Elephant's dead. That's that's number one down. All right, cool, cool. There we go. Already out of the armor. This is easy money, bro. With the healing on, this is easy money. The heart, shoot the heart, shoot that heart. It's dead. That's it. It should be it, right? Let's go. That's it. I should be Easter egg done. I'm pretty sure. Yep, it is done. Let's go, baby. See, the Helion's just too good, bro. It is just too good. And there we go. There's the trophy and the cutscene. Now that the Easter egg was complete, there are plenty of other trophies to be completed on this map. Miscellaneous trophies such as surviving until round 20 without opening a single door. This is one of the recurring trophies in a couple different maps in this game, but this trophy in 9 was one of the easier ones. The reason being there are challenges you can complete inside of the game that grant you a pack-a-punch fully automatic pistol after you complete three of them. That pistol easily carried me 20 rounds and is ironically one of the better bullet weapons 
rounds inside of Black Ops 4. After 20 rounds, the trophy finally popped. Speaking of the challenges on this map, there is a trophy that involves completing every challenge on a single banner. To start a challenge line, you have to run up to one of the four banners in the starting room and knife the rope connected to them. From there, you can complete nine challenges with a reward coming at the end of each one. The first six challenges are super easy, with some of them including sliding under a blade trap, just killing zombie tigers, or surviving a full round in a certain place. The final three challenges were the tougher of the bunch. For the final challenge, I needed to kill the main boss zombie of the map, the Blightfather, while being grappled by his tongue. Come on, Blightfather. No, not that. I need you to lick me, Blightfather. Give me licky licky, please. Licky licky. Please. Please. But Oh, here we go. Please. Please. Let's go. I got it. All right. Now, if I collect this reward, I should get the trophy, correct? And come on. Give it to me. Okay. Yeah, there it is. Let's go. Skilled adversary. After a couple more miscellaneous trophies, my journey on nine was done, which also means that the fun for now is done because this next map was, well, for a better lack of terms, straight ass. Ah, Voyage of Despair, a map based on the Titanic. Which in theory, this concept is actually really cool. Fighting zombies on the Titanic, like that is awesome. Like the Easter egg for this map is about to be lit. Well, if you're watching this video and you consider shooting planets with bullets out of the sky, awesome. Well, you need to- Stop it, get some help. Seriously, this whole map's easter egg just makes you feel like you're on one big acid trip. Shooting some planets, collecting their orb, it, it's all just one shit show. Finally, after all that, I was nearing the end of this it? boss fight. Oh, I should've got a new shield. Oh, all right, we're good. It's over. Yep, I knew I was going into dying wish there. Please that be the end, it's not the end. Yeah, we're done here, chat. It's over, we're gonna, we're gonna, it's, it's definitely over here. I hate the future again this map, bro. Yeah, that one was pretty tough, but on my next attempt, I made it even farther. Just run, just run, just run, failure, just run, just run. We almost had a Helion Salvo ammo. Okay, we gotta pull this out. Break! What the f Break! What the hell, dog? Don't stop spamming the rocket launcher. How many ice things are there, bro? This is the final one. This is the final one. Get out of my way, zombie. Boom, that's it. Jesus Christ. All right, here's the iceberg that made us crash. Now guess what, chat? Guess what's about to come out? You guys are gonna love this shit. Like, yeah, this shit is crazy. The, the, the iceberg, the iceberg in the Titanic was an eye. Actual real life events. There we go. All right, that was, that was phase one. So maybe you don't start fighting them yet. All right, get the thingies. Where's this? And just look how quick this this Helion melts. All right, this is like the hardest part of the boss. I, I have, I have uh, thingies too, I gotta remember that. Two missiles, it's that easy. They definitely made this easier solo. And that's that phase, done. It's that easy, chat. It's just that easy with the Helion. And that's that face. It's just that easy, chat. It is just that easy with the Helion. Yeah, that, like, when, once I get the Helion, like, I know I won the map, basically. That's basically what it is. Like, it's crazy how overpowered this thing is. It's better than every wonder weapon in the game. It really is. I... That's it. Oh, it's over. I never want to do that. I never want to do that again. I hate that Easter egg so much, bro. I never want to do that again, bro. I never want to do that again, bro. Oh, abandoned ship. There we go. The rest of the trophies were easy, including taking every fast travel path in the map and pack-a-punching in every single location available on the map. Voyage of Despair made me fall into despair while playing it, but at least it was done now. But this next map was the map that made me fall into depression. <laughs> Good old Blood of the Dead. The remake of the cult classic map, Mob of the Dead. The most hyped up map at BO4's release. The most hyped up, and also BO4's biggest disappointment. Out of all the flaws and disappointments of Black Ops 4, this map is the mother of all of them. The Easter egg for this map is straight up pain. I tried to do this Easter egg solo, but after failing multiple times, I had to call in some friends to help me. With the help of fellow YouTuber Shardix and his subscriber Vicious Vice, we were able to make it to the final boss fight. All right, time for this nine minute cutscene. I'm gonna take a nap and. Uh, we're gonna come back and this is gonna be good. All right, Ghost Bird, come on, uh, save us. Free us, Ghost Bird. Uh, he's not coming. Oh, he'll come, all right. What? Nothing. 
There he is. Those are the four souls. Oh. Those are the four souls of the four characters from freaking uh from Mob of the oh, Dead. Oh, that's this mob. Yep. Come in here and shoot these orbs. With the shield, right? No, no, with your gun. Okay. Oh, I'm dying. I'm dying. Yeah, you gotta get inside the the hole. You have to get inside the red. Oh. I think now you I shoot know. the orb. Yep, I got it the first time. You're shooting the mag. You're shooting the magma at their feet. Yeah, yeah. Congratulations. Like, I did it like three times. You're now. playing the game. Congratulations. I'm so good at this game. <laughs> You're playing the game normally. Congratulations. Oh my god. Delicious lies. Throw a monkey. Shoot the red orbs. Shoot the red orbs. Alright, alright. I'm shooting the middle. Wait, did I not get it? Oh, I, I gotta hop in the machine. Take my blood. Take mine blood. Shut up, Nikolai. You're ruining the moment. It's Big Daddy Richtoff and he's here. Oh, now I'm coming out. Are we supposed to kill giant Brutus? With the yeah, yeah, hold on, hold on. Hold on. Yo! Look at him, look at him! <laughs> now kill him. And literally, that's it. He dies in one shot, just like every other Brutus. I don't really understand. Yep, and it's over. <laughs> he literally. <laughs> yes! Alright, I, I, I said this with Voyage, and I'm gonna say the same thing with Blood of the Dead. I hope I never have to do the Easter egg ever again in my life. After the Easter egg putting me through nothing but pain, I wish I could say the pain was over. But it wasn't, as I have another trophy having to do with surviving in the starting area until round 20. There are two sides of the Blood of the Dead, the main area where the prison is, and also the west side area. Of course I couldn't stay in the big open area, I had to stay in the west side area, which only has one perk, and most of the time also has the mystery box in one of the locations. What I used to help me get this trophy was an elixir that gave me four additional random perks not in my loadout, as well as an elixir that gave me the shield without having to actually build it. If you're unsure what elixirs do, they are basically Black Ops 4 system of gobble gums from Black Ops 3, but way worse. I got a pretty good gun from the box, and then from there, I used the shield and this trap right here in New Industries to help me along the way. After using this strategy, I got the 20 rounds, as well as earned myself the trophy. Other trophies on this map were actually pretty fun, despite the map being a pain. One trophy required me to have all of the classics from Mob of the Dead at the same time, such as the Hell's Retriever, the Blundergat, the Spoon, and the Tommy Gun. Another one required me to acquire all of the variants of the Blundergat, such as the Blundergat itself, the Acid Gat, and the brand new Magma Gat. There was also a trophy returning from the original Mob of the Dead, where I needed to complete an entire gondola ride with a warden, as well as I needed to feed the dogheads from really far away. For this, I had a couple friends train up zombies near the doghead, while I go to the location I needed to shoot them from, and killed them. And that was the final map for all of the base game zombies trophies. I still have plenty of zombies to go through, but for now, I'm gonna move on to the Specialist HQ. Now you might all be thinking, what the absolute hell is Specialist HQ? And I'm with you, I was always wondering the same exact thing, as I always saw it sitting there, yet I never actually cared to try it out. Hello darkness, my old friend. I've come to talk with you again. As you may or may not know, Black Ops 4 wasn't released with a campaign. They cut the campaign and decided to replace it with Blackout the Battle Royale. This is the closest you're going to get to any kind of story in Black Ops 4. This mode is basically a glorified MP tutorial with story cutscenes, if that makes sense. It shows you how each specialist weapon and ability works, and then you get to go in to play a match with bots and try it out in real game situations. Some trophies in this mode include earning one star with each specialist. You get that for winning the game, which is the same exact thing as winning one screen which each specialist not really sure why they added two trophies that are the same thing just worded differently as well as completing all 10 specialist tutorials additional things i had to complete include earning 100 of the stars in specialist hq for each specialist i have to complete three matches in total with difficulty increasing in each match which gives me a total of 30 matches to play against bots while playing through these matches there are a group of challenges i also have to complete which earns me this trophy for collecting all of the intel the challenges weren't hard by any means some included getting 100 kills with headshots, 25 melee kills, 100 kills with specialist weapons or equipment, or 50 kills with score streaks. Of course, the first trophies I unlocked were the three that were pretty much the same thing. Then, as I was finishing off all of the final stars I needed, I got all of the intel. Then, finally, after this boring grind, I earned myself all of the stars. Now, I have some more work to do inside of Zombies before I get to the DLC, as there are some miscellaneous trophies that are not linked to a certain map. There was another mode in Zombies that launched with Black Ops 4 called Rush, which is basically like an arcade mode where you shoot zombies and rack up score, and whoever would end with the most score wins. 
points. In this, there were three trophies. One for getting a personal score of 250k, another one for getting a team score of 500k, and the last one for earning a 100 times combo. I also used this mode to unlock another trophy called Perkaholic Relapse, where I needed to acquire every perk in the game in a single game. This was possible because of a perk you could run named Secret Sauce, which gives you a random perk every time you buy it. So what I did was equip that in every slot in my loadout, loaded up a game of Rush where all of the perks were free, then just cycled through perks until I got the trophy. I also had to equip PhD and kill 10 zombies while falling from 10 feet or more for a trophy. For this, I loaded up a game of Blood of the Dead and I had a friend train up zombies and then I would jump off of something and see if I could kill enough zombies for the trophy. This took a few tries because the way PhD works in this game is kind of dumb. For that, I say make phd great again this took a few tries but after a while i finally got it done there was also a trophy for ranking up every specialist weapon in the game to the max level there are eight in total four on the ether maps and four for the chaos maps on nine i was able to max out my final weapon and earn myself the trophy finally it was time to tackle the dlc in this game which was my favorite part of doing this whole journey like i said before there are five dlc packs with 10 trophies each and the first map to beat was classified Classified is a remake of the map 5 from Black Ops 1, and in my opinion, the much superior version of the map. This map does not have a main quest or easter egg, but it does have an easter egg to unlock the map's main wonder weapon, the Winter's Howl. And of course, for completing it, I get the trophy Cold War Remedy. To unlock it, all I had to do was gather some codes you can reveal around the map, then input them into this panel right here. Once I do that, I go to Pack-a-Punch, where I can find it in a briefcase, pick it up, and I got myself a free Winter's Howl, as well as the trophy. With the Winter's Howl, there was actually another trophy I can unlock by shattering 115 zombies in a single game. For that, all I needed to do was freeze them with the Winter's Howl, then simply shoot them with my normal bullet weapon. Another trophy that required me to kill 115 zombies was this one, where I needed to kill zombies using traps. And of course, what's Black Ops 4 zombies trophies without another trophy involving surviving 20 rounds under certain circumstances? This time, there were two of those trophies, one for surviving 20 rounds without using an elevator, and another for not turning on power. For this, I decided to stack both of them together. And this came down to the wire. Oh my God, that came down to the freaking wire, man. Oh my God. There we go, there's the two trophies though. That was for not turning on the power and not using an elevator. Oh, that came down to the goddamn wire. Oh my god, I have zero revives. After that was done, I had to survive five consecutive rounds in the war room elevator. Very easy, got this done on the earlier rounds of the game. Now that classified was done, it was time to move to the first official DLC map of Black Ops 4, Dead of the Night. Dead of the Night is a prequel map to the whole chaos story introduced in Black Ops 4, and it's another map with an incredible concept. Werewolves and vampires in a haunted mansion with zombies just seemed too perfect. The issue with this map is it's just way too crowded. So many buildables, so many different types of zombies, it can get overwhelming at times. The easter egg in this map follows a simple formula similar to 9, where you turn on the power, turn on Pack-a-Punch, then complete three different quest lines, and then you got yourself a boss fight. I will give this map its props when it comes to the boss fight, though. Though. All right, here we go. Another Easter egg down, another boss fight. Don't have the Helion Salvo for this one, but we got something I think is better for this one. This Spitfire shoots an incredible amount of bullets. I'm just going to rely on my... I don't even have Dying Wish, so I can't even say I'm going to rely on my Dying Wish because I'm not relying on that either. I should have came in here with Homunculus. That was not a good idea on my part. See, then you just spray him with this Spitfire, and apparently it does a crap load of damage. Look at it. I think it's already done. Especially if I turn on free fire here, I have unlimited ammo. Just spray the hell into his chest, and that's it, I think. Yep, that's that's literally it. It does in so much damage. That's why I decided to take this thing. We got a freaking werewolf. The, it melted. And deleted. Deleted! Spray him, spray him, spray him. That is insane. That... That's actually insane, man. That is actually insane how fast he dies. That was it? Really? Oh my god, I actually did melt him. Holy crap. That actually destroys him. That, okay, whenever I do this Easter egg, I'm not gonna say for this Easter egg, by the way, I hope I never do this Easter egg again. 
or I never have to do this Easter egg again because I actually don't mind this Easter egg like I hate the other two but man, whenever I do that Easter egg, I have to get that Spitfire. That is ridiculous. Most of the miscellaneous trophies I got back when the map came out in 2019. So there wasn't much left for me to do besides simply just meleeing a Nosferatu with the steak knife in the dining room. This next map was actually a pretty fun one because I had never played this map back when it first came out. So I had zero experience of it. Without further ado, let's hop into Ancient Evil. Of course, starting off, we got another trophy for surviving in the first room for 20 rounds. With this, my specialist weapon, Wraith Fires, and Elixirs were a big help with this. The starting area in Ancient Evil was pretty small, so as it got up in the rounds, it started to get tough. All I had was a pistol and a shotgun to shoot with, so insta-kill Elixirs, my specialist weapon, and my Wraith Fires were what really helped me get this done. In this map, there are four wonder weapons that are really cool in the form of gauntlets. Each gauntlet has a trophy link to it where you need to kill enemies with a single charge attack. These gauntlets also have two upgrades you could do to them and for a trophy i needed to upgrade all four gauntlets to their max in one game as i got each gauntlet i decided to finish the trophy attached to it for the gauntlet of charon the charge attack created a blood portal that dragged zombies to the underworld and i needed to drag 15 zombies with one charge attack for the gauntlet of Hamera, the charge attack was like a beam that dropped from the sky and for the trophy i needed to kill 20 zombies with one channel attack with the gauntlet of gaia i needed to impale eight zombies with one charge attack and finally with the gauntlet of Oranos, i think that's how you say that. The charge ability was basically using the force and I needed to flank 20 zombies with one charge attack. To upgrade all four gauntlets, after I upgraded them once, I needed to kill catalyst zombies at their respective locations where you pick up the hand. Once I've done that for all four, I can go over to the pack a punch machine and start a challenge for each hand. First, I had to defeat a bunch of elemental zombies, then skeletons, then giga knees, which is the boss zombie for the map, and then finally blight fathers. After that was done, the trophy popped. Finally, the easter egg for this map turned out to be one of my favorites in zombies well that's once i knew how it actually worked the boss fight for this map has two phases first you fight a giant zombie pegasus then you fight a zombie warlord things didn't really go well in the first attempt and you're about to see why i have to be doing something wrong i'm about to hit i'm about to hit round 100 just doing this easter egg by myself like because the rounds keep on switching but like i i don't it doesn't seem like i'm doing damage to the goddamn thing What is frying my health, dude? I, I I feel like I've done so much damage to this freaking Pegasus just for nothing to happen. Is it finally over? Wow, it's finally over, but all my perks are freaking gone. It's round 50, dude. Dude, why isn't this guy dying? Am I doing something wrong? I'm shooting him. Like, look, I get him this easy, right? Then I'm gonna shoot him. I'm gonna shoot him. And it's gonna seem like it's doing nothing and I have no ammo. Like, is it doing nothing or am I getting hits on him? 2,000 years later. A double points, that's what I get. And it's over, Ooh. yeah, game's over. I cannot believe that's a real thing. I cannot believe that is a real thing, man. After that attempt, I still didn't really know what was wrong. I thought maybe the Helion was glitched out in this boss fight, so I went with something else, and yeah, still not so good. I don't know what to do. 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 I don't know what to do, man. I don't know what the game wants me to do. I don't know what the game wants me to on my third attempt, I learned that the zombie warlord throws these fireballs that when you run through them, charges your specialist weapon really, really fast. And turns out when you down the pegasus or the warlord into that orange state, the specialist weapon actually shreds their health really fast and does the most damage out of anything else. As well as the Helion salvo downs them into that state really fast. I also decided to switch my specialist weapon to the hammer of Valhalla, which also seemed to be a huge help. So let's see on this attempt if I'm finally able to do this easter egg. Did I just beat it in one fucking phase? Or am I just kicking the shit out of him? Oh my god, bro. There's no way I just beat him in... It was that easy? 
I just had to use a specialist weapon? Nah, bro, that's, that's fake. It was not that easy in the last time, bro. What a game. I just had to use a specialist weapon. That's all I had to do. What a game. I actually really enjoyed Ancient Evil, but the last two maps were kind of on the more boring side. Alpha Omega, another remake of a map, this time from Black Ops 2's Nuketown. But for Alpha Omega, I actually did this Easter egg back when this map first came out, so of course I already have the trophy for it. Continuing on the topic of unoriginality, Alpha Omega brings back the beloved Galva Knuckles from Black Ops 2, as well as four elemental ray gun Mark II wonder weapons that are all pretty shitty. There's a trophy I can get with the Galva Knuckles by killing 115 zombies with them in a single match. If you're wondering why the number is always 115 and you're not familiar with the zombies lore well tough luck because if i were to explain the lore to you we would be here for almost seven hours and i don't got time for that but after milling those zombies i got the trophy now let's get to the four elemental ray guns of course there was a trophy for constructing all four in a single game and they're all pretty fun to use and easy to construct but the problem is that they just aren't very good there was a shotgun ray gun a fully automatic ray gun that when you pack a punch him turns into dual weld which these are probably my favorite ones to use a ray gun that creates a huge explosion and then the worst one of them all one that shoots out an electric beam and takes forever to kill the zombies guess what one they decided to make the only trophy for killing zombies with that certain ray gun well if you guess anyone but the electric beam ray gun you're wrong of course once i constructed all four of the ray guns that trophy popped and then after that i got the pleasure of using this trash ray gun to stun 10 zombies at once for another trophy after that we have yet again another survive 20 rounds trophy this was the last one but this was by far the hardest one yet surviving 20 rounds without leaving the security checkpoint means i can only stay in this little tiny area the whole entire game where there are zero guns zero perks and zero pack a punch which means as i get into later rounds i have nothing to depend on besides my equipment and my specialist weapon for this what really helped me was the use of my elixirs i ran one that gave me the shield upon use one that dropped a full power up drop for my specialist weapon and then one that dropped insta kills on use despite all of that all of that help it was still a tough one that again came down to the wire three more rounds to go i got no self revives it's gonna be it's gonna cut close man it's gonna cut close Pull it out, pull it out. Oh my god, oh my god. That, alright. I used my last power keg. I need a dog round, man. I really do. I desperately need one for a max ammo. Because if I get a dog round here, I can insta-kill it, and then the last round, I can insta-kill that and just go to town. And I got burned out, which I'm actually going to pop that this round, I think. Oh my god, yes, dog round. That is absolutely clutch. That is so clutch. I think getting a dog round here was the difference between me doing it on this run or not. All right, there we go. Got a max ammo. I can use insta-kill next round as well as I probably get my specialist weapon, and I got three wraith fires. This should be a dub. This should be a dub, but we'll see. Let's not choke this. Let's go. Oh my god, and and there's a full power there. All right, please finish out the finish out the rest of the round with this. Oh, that's round, that's round, that's round. It's twenty. Oh my god, we have to beat twenty. Oh my god, you actually have to go. You don't have to beat round twenty, bro. Put this away. Oh my god, now I got no specialist for next round though. At least I got insta. Oh, we got this. And I got my specialist weapon. Yeah, we got this. Oh my god, we got this. This is over. It's over, ladies and gentlemen. It is over like Vince Carter. Over. Let's go, man. Too easy. Do not ignore ignore the amount of downs I've taken, all right? Ignore the amount of downs I've taken. It is too easy. We got the trophy. That is every trophy on Alpha Omega. Alpha Omega is done. And we are now at the final map of our zombies journey and the end of the Ether storyline. Tagged your toe in. A lot of Zombies fans were disappointed with the final map of the main storyline. As again, it's not an original map for the big finale, with it being a remake of the Black Ops 1 classic, Call of the Dead. Of course, no one's mad at a Call of the Dead remake, but we didn't want it as the final map in the Ether storyline. We were kind of looking at it for something else, Treyarch, Activision, you know what I'm saying? Oh, we're never getting it, I don't even know, who am I getting? We're never getting it. First order of business, shoot P off the top of a lighthouse with a pistol, or I guess it could 
It could be. Yeah, yeah, never mind. Here's trophy popping. Yay, another trophy popping. Woo! Next order of business was a trophy that I thought was a pretty cool one. The trophy description was to find the secret. And again, if you want to know the lore of zombies and you got some time to kill, seven hours, you'll learn. But to do this was really weird. You kind of just got to spin around on this launch pad and hope it launches you to the correct area. Once you do that, swim through some sub zero temperature water. You know, nothing new. Then once you emerge from the water and see the giant planet in front of you, the trophy pops. Now, who's up for even more challenges? Because that's what we're doing next around the map are some statues that when you go up to them start a line of challenges and you can tell by this point they just stop giving a shit because these challenges are absurd challenges include bringing jars of pee from the lighthouse and dumping them out in water playing whack-a-mole playing a tune with snowballs and then just some dumb stuff the most tedious trophies in this map three trophies that have me running around the entire map because why not first up pack a punch in every possible location this was the most annoying one because there is a random chance for it to spawn at each location so i had to say Sit there and wait until I actually get the last location I need. The next one I had to use every zip line without going down or killing an enemy. This was easy. All I did was just leave one zombie and then run around the entire map like a madman running zip lines. Then I had to open every door in the map without turning on the power. Again, run around the entire map and waste any points I earn on opening useless doors, as well as crafting dynamite and opening paths using that. And with that, zombies was all done. As for the Easter egg for Tagged or Toe, I had already done it back in 2020 before Cold War came out. So of course, that also means that I already have the trophy for it. Zombies was the main reason why I did this platinum, because I love zombies, and I always have. And while BO4 may not be the best mode for zombies, I still enjoyed my time. But what I was not prepared for was how painful the last portion of this platinum was going. Going to be ladies and gentlemen the reason i will never and i mean never recommend this platinum to anyone because of this singular mode blackout In Blackout, there are only five trophies, but man, they are a pain. There are two trophies where all you have to do is win games. You get one trophy for winning your first time and then another one for winning 10 times. Now, if you're not good at Blackout and just started playing, more than likely you're gonna get shit on by all the losers with 4,000 plus hours on the game that haven't stopped playing this since the game came out. Oh yeah. That's just about everyone who still plays Blackout. Then the other three trophies have to do with unlocking the characters in Blackout. There are three groups of characters you can unlock, specialist, campaign characters, and zombie characters. The good news is at some point, Treyarch was nice enough to auto unlock every single specialist character for everybody. And that was one grind that I could completely avoid. And once you load up a singular game of Blackout for the first time, that trophy auto pops. But the way to unlock these characters in game was to drop into the map, find the character's mission item then from there you can do the mission and if you complete all of the requirements at the end of the game you unlock the character some items spawned at a certain place every game and some items you get from complete rng some of the missions were really difficult and for one of the characters you had to flat out win the game with the item in your inventory in order to unlock him the first character i unlocked was dempsey whose item was a juggernaut bottle that always spawned at nuketown island once you got the item you needed to kill an enemy with a grenade then simply finish the game that's not so bad but still killing an enemy with a grenade can be tough if the player actually knows what they're doing luckily i was able to get this in a game mode where you had jetpacks like i said i got extremely lucky and then yeah i basically camped it out to try to get the win but of course i didn't because i suck but at least i got the character after this i continued to go for the origins crew characters with the help of some of my teammates but this time we had a plan our strategy was for one teammate to go to get woods's item which was the character that requires you to outright win the game in order to unlock him then me and my other teammates would go to the graveyard next to the asylum to get nikolai's item and for him all you have to do is collect his item and then place top three in a game of squads after we got nikolai's item we would then go to asylum to get rick Toffin's item, which you get from sacrificing one of the Origins crew's items while playing as someone from the Origins crew. For that, we sacrifice Takio's item, which can be found also in Asylum. After you get Rick Toffin's item, the only other thing you have to do is place top two in squads. Now that I had Nikolai, Rick Toffin, and Woods' item, I had a chance to be great here. I could unlock all three of these characters in one single swoop with a win as well as getting my first win and the trophy. So you know what we decided to do? We wanted to be great. So so we camped.
the entire game. There's no shame in the game here. I'm not here to break kill records. I'm here to win this game. I'm here to unlock trophies. That's it. After this, I'm done. I'm never playing a single game of Blackout ever again. So you loser people who are still playing Blackout, that's all you play. You can go back to getting kill records, getting as many wins as you want. You got it. Just let me get my characters. It was getting closer and closer to the end of the game and we still had everyone in our squad alive, including us having a random. I had one shot, one opportunity to be great. I can unlock two of the hardest characters in the game right here. Four versus two here. What do I do? What am I going to- I get downed, but he's here. Nice. He, he got him. Got him. Let's go. Let's go. <laughs> Let's go. Three characters. Holy shit. That's crazy. That was absolutely massive to have all those characters unlocked in a single game then for takio he was easy all i had to do was get his item not use any pieces of equipment and then place top three in a game of squads the power of hiding again got me this character pretty easily now it was time to unlock the chaos crew these characters were easily the most annoying characters to unlock in the game because to get their items you have to get them to drop from zombies that you can kill on the map it's completely random between like six set locations on the entire map where the zombies can actually spawn on top of that you're not guaranteed the item even if you wipe every zombie from that area and oftentimes other squads like to also drop on the zombie areas with you because they often yield really good loot now the missions to unlock bruno and diego were pretty easy once i actually got the item for bruno all i had to do was down an enemy with a melee kill and then finish him and for diego all i had to do was kill an enemy with a headshot then finish him off those were easy once i got them the harder one was shaw where i needed to get his item then down two enemies with wraith fires or acid bombs and you can only get his item after clearing all the zombies and opening up the mystery box and again that's completely random and rng as well and just like dempsey it can be tough to unlock the character when you're going against players who actually know what they're doing because they probably won't be getting killed by grenades or they'll just smoke you before you even have a chance the way i unlocked shaw was the luckiest way on planet earth i i still don't even know why this worked in the first place or now how this even counted but here you go Oh, bitch, bro. Oh, I got him. I don't think that that's gonna count. But I killed that guy. I fucking got him. Let's go. I got him. That's crazy. The only character I needed left was Scarlet. I have played a lot of games of Blackout. The amount of times I've seen Scarlet's item spawn is twice and that is it so we're gonna get to her later now moving on to the campaign characters i already had woods so now i only needed three more characters mason reznov and menendez during the making of this video the actor who voiced menendez kamar de los reyes tragically passed away from cancer at 56 rest in peace and thank you for an incredible performance on one of the coolest villains in call of duty history menendez was the first character i tried going for on the campaign side and he could be unlocked also in the alcatraz map which is a smaller map with less players and it also has respawn and you were able to get his item from supply drops his mission isn't hard at all all you have to do is kill two enemies with a shotgun then finish them off with that shotgun as well but of course me the one who makes things that should be pretty easy difficult struggled to do this dude this game can't be serious with this melee damage i got him finishes fuck this game bro of course there's a guy here fiending me bro what are you doing i want to see what this guy was doing this guy is a fiend bro like what are you doing there that's my oh my god and he just saw me land too i hate this game this guy sucks too and he almost died to another player there's two people here. there's two people i'm fucking dead did he jump off? Hold on, I got him, I got him. That's one, that's one. No, I couldn't get the fucking finish, dog. That's the same one I have. Yo, guy in the squad drop. Got him. Hold up, don't finish him off. Yep, yep, yep. I got him. I gotta reload, I gotta reload. I got it. Thank the fucking lord. Yo, right here. Bro. 
Uh, shotgun's overpowered. I got him. The character's in lock now, so I don't even care. The only two characters I had left for both trophies were Reznov for the campaign characters and Scarlet for the zombies characters. I have a confession to make for these two. I boosted. Reznov's mission, once you got his item, was to get a kill from 200 meters or over. And I'll admit it right now. I'll admit it. I'll be the first one to admit this. I'm simply not good enough to do that. And for Scarlet, like I said, twice ever I've gotten this item, once in a legit game and died with it, and then the second one while boosting for it. I easily could have done this legit if I actually got the item, because all I had to do was run over an enemy with the item and then finish the game. But the odds of actually getting this item to drop were just completely ridiculous, so I boosted it. Of course, after I unlocked the two characters, both trophies popped, and now all I needed were the wins. 10 wins were the only thing stopping me from a achieving this plat. While getting characters, I managed to rack up 7 of the 10 wins, so I only needed 3 more for the plat. Some games I came so close, but others, I was so, so far. More, more, more. 3v2, 3v2. I gotta do shit. Yeah, he's up top, he's up top. He just let me the fuck up, so. Alright, ready to pull out? Let's go! That's how we do it, even with a dumb teammate. No way that guy just Kobe'd that shit. Four people left. There's four people left. Three? Oh my god, tell me it's two. It's a one. It's gonna be a one v one. Please, please, please. He's in the water. He has to be in the water. Come on. No. No! No! No, he was in the fucking water like a loser. Oh my god. To the left, it's right in front of us. Coming up behind us, he's like down, he's like on the hill. I'm dead. <gasps> Fuck, dude, why did I try to shotgun him? He's over here, he's weak though. Not the cap. He's like, he's, like <laughs> he's, he's not that weak, but. Team is rushing. Come on, teammate, come on, teammate. Yes, let's go, teammates! Our teammates actually goaded, let's go! Good shit, bro. Oh my god, let's go! One win now is all I needed. We were in a game, 13 people left, full squad still alive. That's alright, it's all good. They jump down, they jump. One. One more, one more. Yeah, he's in the storm. There's still, there's still more people left. Get him up, get him up, get him up. I'm healing, I'm healing. This loser really put a guardian. That is the biggest loser shit I have ever seen in my life. Terrible fucking video game. This is the worst designed battle royale of all time. If you're confused on what happened, let me break it down for you. At the bottom remained one enemy while three of us were still on top on this balcony. The enemy, without at least my knowledge, placed a barricade down. If you don't know what a barricade is, it's a basically a barricade, obviously, that uh, basically is like a microwave and it fries your health super fast when you're in front of it. So of course, me and my three teammates jumped down to go finish off the final enemy, but the circle was getting so small, we had no choice but to land in front of the barricade and uh, it baked us all alive. In what world did they think that that was balanced in any way, shape, or form. The next insanely stupid and unbalanced thing that was in this game were specialist weapons and zombie wonder weapons in a blackout multiplayer game. If you have these items end game, you won. You won the game. End of discussion. They were that overpowered. War machine. War machine. Yeah, no, I wasn't happy with that one at all. You might be wondering, uh, you put so many bolts into that kid, how the F did he not die? Yeah, if you win the RNG war and find level 3 armor, is which is what he had on, you're essentially a juggernaut in this game. Just one more win, man. That was all I needed. All we needed, and we just kept getting top 3 and losing to just that bullshit stuff, man. But again, we found ourselves in a game where we had a chance. Alright, an auger. Why can't I res you? Cluster. Get him, get him, he's good, he's good. They're pushing, they're on top of our building. They're in there, they're in there. How are you frying me? Nice, Keen, I got one. That's all good, get the dub. Now get out. 
Nice shot. One more, one more. Sniper. Yes, yes, let's go. There you go. Finally, bro. Give me the platinum. Give me this fucking platinum. Give me this flat. Let's go, bro. Oh my god. It feels so good. It feels so good, bro. Yes. Oh my god, I never have to play this game again. I got the plat. I got the plat. I'm on installing. Get off my fucking console. Get off this shit. No, not eject the disc. I don't have the disc in. Delete it. Get it off. Thank you. Black Ops 4 took me a little over 300 hours. Some of it was casual, but it was still over 200 hours at least. This was two months of my life I'll never get back. Would I ever recommend this platinum to any soul? Would I recommend it to my worst enemy? Absolutely not. Thank you guys for watching. Of course, if you would like to see the video where I platinum Black Ops 3, click on this video below.